Okay, so let's continue. So in the previous video, um, I was done with explaining this part, which is how multicollinearity would affect the variance of beta head chain. And again, I'm just repeating what I did in class. So if you have already your notes, I'm not saying anything new. Okay, I'm just saying it because I've got a couple of questions after class and even until yesterday I got an email about, um, actually about the beta hat, not about the variance, but I just said let me explain both again, just in case if you missed some. So uh, we did, I did explain now how um, the variance of beta hat would be affected by multicollinearity. Now let's talk about beta hat J. So uh, let me take a blank screen. And um, again, assuming that I have just a very simple model in which I have what, let me write with another color because I hate red with black. It's not I hate red of black, just the white nicer. Looks like a real board. So, uh, so the y i equal beta hat one, assuming that I don't have an intercept just for simplicity, i plus beta hat 2 x 2 i plus the error term. Okay, so what if I want to um, compute beta hat 2? Beta hat 2 would be computed in um, similar to what we did on um, on the notes, like I have my PhD notes uh, of the computation uh, by, by first order condition and uh, solving for beta hat node, which is the intercept in beta hat one. So it's the same thing. And, uh, but when we have like more than one X, um, it gets complicated, little bit complicated. But the good thing is I'm not going to ask you to derive it. I'm just going to tell you that Beta hat 2 would be equal to, again, this is what I had on the board, so you don't have to write again, just for those of you uh, who are missing something, you can double check. So, uh, I'm sorry. So, it's the sum of yi x 1i multiplied times the sum of x 2i squared minus the sum I'm sorry the pen is just too slippery minus the sum of y i x 2 i this is 2 i right uh, and then the sum of x 1 i x 2 i over the sum of x1 i squared the sum of x2 i squared minus the sum of x1 i x2 I whole square. Okay, so um, if we assume that I have no correlation between x2 or no connection between x2i and x1i, okay, so like you can have it on the side here. What if we assume that x2i is equal to lambda x1i and lambda is equal to zero? no connection between the two, then we can easily, uh, if I have a model like this, then I can easily say beta hat one would explain to me, uh, I'm sorry, this, I'm sorry, one mistake. This one is supposed to be one. Okay, so I'm talking about beta hat one. So if x hat one uh, is beta hat one would explain the effect of x1i on yi holding x2i constant right and then in the in like if i have a zero collinearity between the two or in other words if i have lambda is equal to zero then i can um, easily be able to say that and i'm 
there is no connection between the two, then I can easily be able to say that beta hat 1 would explain purely the effect of x1 without any effect of x2. And you can repeat the same thing with, with beta hat 2. In other words, beta hat 2 would measure for me the change in yi because of the change in x2i holding x1i constant. However, if I change this lambda and say, what if, okay, what if lambda is equal to a certain value, but it's not zero. And we can just have any other number. And again, I'm, as I said in class, I don't care whether it's positive or negative because beta can be negative, can be a positive, but it's non-zero. So what if this connection is non-zero? Any number. Okay, so that means x1i has an impact or x2, there is a connection between the two. So it's non-zero constant, right? So that means I can go everywhere here and then substitute any time I'm seeing x2i, I can replace it with lambda x1i. And this is what we did in class. Every time, every time you're seeing x2i, replace it with lambda x1i. This is x2i would be replaced with lambda x1i. This is x2i would be replaced with lambda x1i. Same here, it's going to be lambda square x, it's going to be lambda square x1i square. It's going to be lambda x1i inside the bracket whole square. So as I did it in class, it's exactly what we did in class. We're just going to rewrite beta hat 1 in terms of only yi and x1i. That's it. So if you do so, then we're going to have a beta that is as follows. And again, if you have it uh, already in your notes, you don't have to write it again. I'm just repeating it for those who missed anything. So... Beta hat 1 would be equal to the sum of yi x1i, so we didn't change anything here, and then the sum, and then um, you can always take lambda outside the summation sign because it's a constant, okay, and the sum of x1i squared minus lambda, the sum of yi x1i okay and then lambda the sum of x1i and the square is inside okay and okay and then everything is divided by the sum of x1i square lambda square the sum of x1i square minus lambda square the sum of x1i square whole square okay so this is very important and this is what we exactly did in class. We rewrote beta hat 1 in terms of x1i and yi and just the lambdas, assuming that lambda is non-zero constant. So if x2 and x1 are perfectly collinear, so we have perfect multicollinearity, that means uh, or i.e. lambda is equal to 1. I want you to imagine that everywhere you see lambda, just put 1. So this one is going to be 1. 1. 1. 1 squared is 1. 1. That means I can have this whole term minus this whole term would give me 0. This whole term minus this thing would give me zero. In other words, if I have perfect multicollinearity, 
theta hat 1 will not be estimated and that's why theta would make your life easy and will drop it for you will drop like the perfectly collinear term for you